all to my channel is this your first time of coming to my channel thanks a lot don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like share and subscribe so in today's tutorial we are going to be making a simple video on how to cut and sew both neckline with handkerchief fling so this blouse now we are going to be having a both neckline and also i'm going to be showing you guys how to achieve your handkerchief fling so if you're interested in learning how to do this please give this video a thumbs up and also click on the notification bell so that you can get notified once a video pop up so what are the basic measurements required in order for you to achieve your both neckline with handkerchief fling so we have our shoulder measurements bust waist hip and our gown length don't forget to join us on facebook to the designs on instagram to the designs and also visit our website you guys we have amazing fashion illustration on our website all the details are going to be in the description box below so let's go ahead now and calculate our basic measurements <laughs> so our shoulder measurement is 18 we have 18 divided by 2 we have 9 our bust is 44 we have 44 divided by 4 plus 2 we have 13 inches our waist is 42 42 divided by 4 plus 2 we have 12.25 our hip is 49 inches 49 divided by 4 plus 2 we have 14.25 our top length is 22 so 22 plus 2 inches for our sewing allowance we have 24 inches now another thing you should also take note of when you want to achieve your both neckline and your handkerchief flay is that we have this blouse is a combination of your both both neckline and also your handkerchief flay so it is also necessary for you to know like your shoulder measurement to your half length and what is half length measurement so half length measurement is simply one inch one to two inches above your navel so you go ahead and place your tape measure from your shoulder to one to two inches above your navel so once you are done with that now what we are going to have for our half length now so we have half length, is it showing? Okay, so we have half length now to be 18 inches. So we'll go ahead and add one inch for our sewing allowance, we have 19 inches. So from our shoulder level to somewhere around our navel where we have our half length is 19 inches. And for the handkerchief flame, in order for you to achieve your handkerchief flame now, you just go ahead and deduct your top length from your half length okay you deduct your top length from your half length so our top length is 22 and our half length is 18 inches so what we have now for our flame what we have now from our flame is 22 minus 18 inches we are going to have four inches now we go ahead and add two inches for our sewing allowance plus two inches for our sewing allowance we have six inches now when you want to cut your handkerchief flay another thing you should also take note of is that for your handkerchief flay you are going to add about five to ten inches which you are going to understand better when we get to the cutting part of this tutorial but note that it varies the number of inches you add for your handkerchief flay varies on how long you want it to be so it varies from five inches to ten inches depending on the style and also how long you want it to be so basically if you are dealing with top where you have like your top um handkerchief flay five to seven inches is actually fine okay so but i'm going to make use of six inches which i'm going to show you guys how to achieve that in the sewing part when we get to the cutting part i'm going to show you guys how to achieve that so now don't forget feel free to drop your question because of this tutorial please feel free to drop your questions in the comment section or any topic you want us to make now don't forget also to visit our website the link is going to be in the description box and trainings are available so both online training and physical training are available and i'm going to put down the details in the description box below so now let's move to the cutting part of this tutorial what do you guys think about my gaily <laughs> guys now the first thing we want to achieve now is to go ahead and mark our basic measurements okay 
So what we have here now is our half length. So we are basically going to mark our shoulder to arm o nine and half, shoulder to bust ten inches, shoulder to under bust we have fourteen inches, and then we'll go ahead and connect the lines together. They are done now. The next thing you are going to do now is to go ahead and mark your basic measurements. Okay, so our that line now is four and half. We'll go ahead and mark four and half. Once we are done with that, we'll connect the lines together. So once you connect the line, this is what you have. Then go ahead and mark half inch on both sides. On the waistline, mark half inch on both sides and then you connect the lines together. So this is what you are going to have for your dart. Now the next thing you are going to do now is to go ahead and mark your shoulder measurements. Go ahead and mark your shoulder measurements 9 inches. Our bust measurement 13.25. Our waist measurements we have 13 inches. So we'll go ahead now and connect the lines together. So make use of our arm O curve and connect our shoulder line to our arm O. So guys, this is what we are going to have. Go ahead and mark your neckline. So for the wideness of my neckline, I'm going to make use of three and half inches for the wideness of the neckline and for the depth I'm going to be making use of three and a half inches I'll make use of three and a half inches so I'll connect it together to give us a round shape this is what we are going to have so on the shoulder slope now we'll go ahead and mark half inch and connect it to our neckline So guys, this is what we are going to have. Achieve now is our boat neckline, okay? What we want to achieve now is our boat neckline. So at this point now, you have like your basic um, block. So you go ahead now and mark what you want to use for your boat neckline. Note that it totally depends on how deep you want it to be, right? And how revealing you want it to be. So for me now, I'm going to make use of about 7 inches. I'm going to make it of 7 inches because I really don't want it to be too deep or too opened that much. So, I'm going to make it of 7 inches. Now, you are going to go ahead now and connect your neckline now to mark this. What we are going to do now is we are basically going to connect this to our neckline, okay? Just to give us that sweet art um, shape. And you are going to make it of your curve just to have your sweet art shape, okay? So we are going to do that. I'm going to make use of dotted lines first. Okay, so that you can have like your sweet tart um, shape. So this is what we are going to have. This is what we are going to have now. But the next thing you are going to do, note that you can bring down this your sweet tarts to this part but because my client just wants it very little okay she doesn't want to like review so much that is why i'm marking this point so if you want to like review a little or more you can bring this down okay you still have like a very good effect it just depends on how much opening you want to have for your key o. now what i'm going to do now is from this point now i'm just going to go ahead and mark one and half I'm just going to go ahead and mark one and half okay so once I mark one and half now what we want to achieve now is our um, tube effect okay so we can differentiate like the yoke area from the tube effect so you just depend on what shape you want to have for your tube effect so we'll go ahead now and connect this together so basically now this is what we have. So you can see the sweet tart effect here for your yoke. And then this is what we are going to have for the opening. I'm going ahead now to cut this out. After cutting it out, so basically cut out this part. You can see we went ahead to cut out this part. And also the neckline, okay? Now this is what you are going to have basically. So you can see the upper part which is our yoke. 
and then you can see this part this way which is like the lower part of it and you can see the v neckline so this is basically what we are going to have so by the time you join it together this way you will discover that this part of it is going to be opened to give us our key o so we'll go ahead now and set this as so guys now this is what we have so the next thing we want to do now is to go ahead and mark our back block so we are going to mark two inches for the back block we are going to mark two inches and then we we'll go ahead now and connect it together so once you are done with that you go ahead and mark your dart line which is four and half mark your dart line four and half connect the lines together on the waistline now mark half inch on both sides <laughs> Mark half inch on both sides and then you connect it to your bust line. Okay, once you are done with that now, you go ahead and mark your shoulder measurements, mark your bust measurements, and then you go ahead and mark your waist measurement. So, we'll go ahead now and connect it together. So for my back block, basically, I'm going to be having like my basic back block, okay? A single piece for my back block. I'm not having any key O for the back block, right? Because most times key O are basically like on the front block. So you go ahead now and take your neckline. So I have three and a half inches by five. And I want a square neckline. So I'll basically just connect this together. Now, on our arm O, we'll go ahead now and mark half inch and then we'll connect it to our neckline, right? So, once we are done, this is basically what we are going to have. So, the next thing we are going to do now, for the back block, we are going to have one single piece this way. Now, we'll go ahead now and transfer it to our... So, guys, now we want to cut out our pattern okay so i'm making of this african print and african prints are available so the first thing i'm going to do now is to go ahead and fold my fabric into two after that i'm going to place my pattern this way because this is our back block okay where we are going to have two pieces so once i'm done now i will go ahead now and cut this out after that this is basically what we are going to have so this is what we have you can see that we have two pieces for the back block so we'll go ahead now and set this as now we want to cut out the upper block so we've gone ahead basically to fold our fabric into two after that you just go ahead and place the upper part of your front block this way so this is what you are going to have by the time you open this up so this is what we are going to have so the lower part also of the front block, we've gone ahead now to fold our fabric into two. Once you are done with that, you place your pattern this way and then you go ahead and cut this out. So by the time you are done, this is basically what you are going to have. So don't forget to... So this is basically what you are going to have. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, like, share and subscribe so you can see what we have so by the time you attach it this way you can see your keyhole neckline at this part you can see your boat neckline rather you can see your boat neckline at this part so if you want yours to be deeper you just go ahead and while you're taking your measurements you go ahead and mark it like a little bit lower on the pattern so this is basically what we have so we'll go ahead now and set this aside so guys, now we want to achieve the anchor shape flay. So the first thing we are going to do now is to go ahead and fold our fabric into four. Once you are done with that, now you are going to go ahead and mark your waist measurement at this point. So you go ahead now and place your tape measure this way. Place your tape measure this way. So you check what you have. You have eight. You take it across this way. You mark where you have eight inches and then you take it to this point so you go ahead and connect the lines together once you are done you always check to be sure that what you have is enough for the waist okay now at this point now we are going to go ahead now and take our flay 
we are going to go ahead now and take our flay length which is eight inches so you place a tape measure this way eight inches eight inches right so you take your tape measure from this point now to this part we have 17 inches you take it across this way you mark where you have 17 you take it this way and then you mark where you have 17 inches so once you are done with that you go ahead now and connect the lines together So you've, we've got right now to connect the lines to give us our basic, um, to give us our basic flay. So the next thing you are going to do now is to place your tape measure this way. So guys, now we want to achieve the anchor shape flay. So the first thing we are going to do now is to go ahead and fold our fabric into four. Once you are done with that, now you are going to go ahead and mark your waist measurement at this point. So you go ahead now and place your tape measure this way. Place your tape measure this way. So you check what you have. You have eight. You take it across this way. You mark where you have eight inches and then you take it to this point. So you go ahead and connect the lines together. Once you are done, you always check to be sure that what you have is enough for the waist. Okay. Now, at this point now, we are going to go ahead now and take our flay. We are going to go ahead now and take our flay length, which is 8 inches. So you place a tape measure this way. 8 inches. 8 inches right so you take your tape measure from this point now to this part we have 17 inches you take it across this way you mark where you have 17 you take it this way and then you mark where you have 17 inches so once you are done with that you go ahead now and connect the lines together So you've, we've got right now to connect the lines to give us our basic, um, to give us our basic flay. So the next thing you are going to do now is to place your tape measure this way to get the anchor chief effect. Now what you are going to do now is you place your tape measure this way, make sure it's straight, and then you are to add about five to six inches to your basic length. Okay, just to give you that your anchor chief effect. So you can add. 5 inches to 10 inches basically it depends on how long you want it to be so for me i'm going to make use of six inches which is fine by me so this is what we have now so i'll go ahead now and mark my six inches so one two three four five six i'm going to have 23 inches okay so i'll go ahead now and mark where we have so I'll go ahead now and mark it. Make sure your tape measure is straight and then go ahead and mark it. So this is where we have our markings. You can see how straight it is. So what you are going to do now basically now is to connect this part of your flay. Connect this part of your flay. Making use of a straight line to this point. And also you connect this part of your flay making use of a straight line to this point so if you are not good at using your hands to draw a straight line then you make use of your pattern sets or your ruler to make sure that what you have is a perfect straight line so we want to connect the line now so i'm just going to go ahead now and place my pattern master this way connect my straight line going ahead now to this is the point where we marked we've gone ahead now to connect it so just place your ruler this way and connect it to this point and then you also place it this other way okay and then you connect it also to this point so by the time you are done you are going to have like your anchor chief flay so please give this video a thumbs up like share and subscribe so this is what we are going to have so we'll go ahead now and cut this part after cutting this part, we'll go ahead and cut out this part where we are attaching to our waist. So once I'm done with that, I'll show you guys what it looks like. So guys, once you are done cutting it out, this is what our anchor chief flay looks like. So by the time you open this up, you can see what we have. 
So by the time you open this up, can you guys see it? You can see one part dropping and then the other part. So this is basically how to achieve your handkerchief flay. So, so guys, now what we have now is our front block. So basically now we'll just go ahead and place our lining this way. Once you place your lining, you go ahead and stitch your neckline and then you stitch the sides. Once I'm done with that, I'll show you guys what it looks like. The block where we have two pieces also. We've also gone ahead to cut out our lining for the two pieces. So basically what you're also going to do for the back block is to stitch the neckline and then you stitch the two sides. So you'll do the same for the second piece. Now for the upper side now where we have our boats, so you go ahead also and cut out your lining. Now for this upper part, you will go ahead and stitch your neckline. After stitching your neckline, you will stitch these two sides, okay? So once I'm done, I'll show you guys what they look like. Now we've gone ahead now to turn it with our lining. This is what it looks like and for the back, this is what we have. Now for the upper part also, where we have our neckline, right? We've gone ahead also to turn it with lining. So what you are going to do basically now is that you are going to attach this upper piece to this part. You are going to attach this upper piece to this part. You can see, make sure you turn the lower side of this upper block, okay? So you can see what we have. You can see, and you can see the boat neckline. You can see that what we wanted was just like a very tiny opening at this part. So you can see what it looks like. With this alone, you can even see your boat effect. So this is basically what we have for the front block. So let's go ahead and set this aside. Block now, we've also gone ahead to turn them with lining. And this is what it looks like. So you go ahead and fix in your dart for the two pieces. Guys, we've gone ahead now to attach the upper piece to the lower piece and this is what our keyhole looks like. So the next thing we are going to do now is you are going to take your back block and place it this way on your front block. You also take the second piece of your back block and then you place it this way. So you make use of your bust measurement and your waist measurement to couple this up so that you will have a... So this is our anchor chief flay. You will determine, you will discover that some parts are long, why some are straight, why the other parts which is long. So you determine where you want this part to fall, okay? That is the dropping part. Do you want it to drop at the front or do you want it to drop at the side? So basically that is what you are going to determine if you want it to drop this way, where where your handkerchief parts are going to be at the sides or if you want to fix it where they will be at the front it depends on what you want so so what we have now is the complete front block where we have our back block and then the front block so basically it's actually very easy what you are going to do now is this is our flay you just go ahead and stitch it all the way so just go ahead and stitch your flay. You open it up and then you stitch it all the way. So we are just basically attaching this flay to the lower part of our top. So you can see what it looks like. So guys, once you are done, this is what our boat neckline looks like. So you can see where we have our tiny boat. 